Today we are back in Maya and I'll be showing you guys how to create a realistic microphone material. We'll be focusing on the front piece which is the foam and we'll be also working on the metallic which is mainly made out of a metal or like a hard plastic. Jonathan from Twitter reached out to me and he was asking if I can create a tutorial about this. So uh, I was um, up for the challenge. So I just jumped into Maya, modeled that microphone quite quickly and then started recording this tutorial for you guys. And if you want to follow along to get the model and the scene files, everything is uploaded to my Patreon. You will find the link in the description below. Um, so without further ado, let's just jump into Maya and get this thing going. All right, so back in Maya, you can see we have a very basic scene. I modeled this microphone here, quite basic stuff. And you can get this scene on my Patreon. The link is in the description below if you want to follow along. So you can see we have this metal plastic object here on the right and we have this bigger foam piece. So I will be showing you how to create those materials. The lighting for this is already set up so we don't need to bother. It's just about shading today. So uh, let's just get started. So I'm just placing the reference in the bottom corner here. So this is the render which I created um, for testing and we'll be, I'll be showing you how to set everything up exactly like this. So let's just close that and just create those shaders. So I'm just creating a standard surface shader like that. And then I'm just uh, hitting Shift D to duplicate it. And if we now um, open the render view again and I hit render, we have those materials assigned. Um, progressive refinement is on. If I select the, the curve or do a render region around the curve, we can now see that the material is working and everything is assigned. So for the, for the diffuse color for that, it's quite basic. It's just a black plastic cable. All I want to do is reduce the, so the, the render color to maybe 0.05, which is essentially a ultimate black. And then you can adjust the roughness a little bit just to get something on it. Something like that should work just fine. Um, and then let's just work already on the metal piece. I just want to first uh, make it dark so it's obvious that what we are dealing with here. And maybe increase the roughness so we can already see what we're getting at. And also for the front piece, I'm just um, changing the color to be dark. Just that we are already in the same, like similar ballpark what we want to work with. All right, so let's focus on this section here. You can see in the reference, if I crop this and make this large, there is some kind of um, bump map on it and it might also be flakiness. So actually we'll be working with both. So let's just select that and make sure we do our framing of this guy. So we just have this. And then I want to create my AI noise, which will be for the bump mapping. And then I'm creating an, a range as well to be able to control it. And then I'm just hooking these two guys together. And then the out goes into a AI bump map. Bump to D. And then finally, from here on, we can go into the shader like that. So if I hit isolate selected on the noise, this is our scale. So we obviously want to go a lot smaller. So increase the scale maybe to 18. Um, and then make sure, I was actually weird that this is not in the same space, so maybe we should go in world space, and then everything is at the same scale. Um, obviously, if you have UVs, you need to have different, use different settings. In the range, we now want to make sure that we really um, crush those values, so we get these individual little flakes or bumps, something like that, and we want to have a lot more than that. So. Um, this, the size is also a bit too large, so in, uh, too small, so I want to uh, make this even bigger so we get finer bumps like that. But again, we want more, right? So how would we get more without changing the scale? We probably would need to create more of these noises. Um, so how to do that is just um, duplicating this network here. So we can just hit Shift D to duplicate this, hook it up again, and we maybe want to do one more. Um, so we have three noises together, and then we want to combine them using a max operation. Um, that way we just add the, the brighter pieces together. So AI composite, like that, and then you just cook these two guys together, like one and two. Make sure the mode is set to max, which always takes the, the higher value. And then we do one more, Shift D, to create another copy of the composite, and then hook these two guys up again like that and then finally go back to the bump make sure this one is also set to max 
um, both are. And then if we if we look at our connected piece, they are still the same because they all live on top of each other. So what do we need to do? We need to offset the noises in the, you can use the offset here, or you can use a different time. And now you can see we're getting more noise together, right? So and I do this again with the other one. Um, we change the time one more time, and then you can see we get different pattern. We can also offset them to actually move them. I think maybe offsetting works a little bit better. And then we should have way more pieces now. Let's um, disable the locking here at the bottom and disable isolate selected. And now you can see we have this nice little bump all over the place. Um, it might be too strong. What I mean is um, the bump is too intense so we can reduce that maybe to 0.02 just to get some kind of surface here. it does not need to be that apparent because you don't really see it in the reference so you can go really low on this just that there's some kind of modulation on the surface so next up is creating these this nice uh, look to it so typically all we need to do is um, just create a car paint shader or you can use the flakes as well um, so the car paint has this flake thing built in so if i hook that up directly to the normal camera you should see these flakiness happening so all you got to do now is change the size of these guys make sure you're also in world space and then if you create a really small number you see you get already these this flaky look to it and it automatically outputs normal so you can plug that in directly and based on the normal randomize you can have it as if there's no bump, but you can also bring it in very gently to get very close to the look you want. And you can already see just by doing that, we are very close to the reference. I think our scale is maybe a bit small, so maybe go 0 0.003, which is quite close, I think. And then we can um, play around with this randomize to get exactly the look we want. Maybe this is a bit too flaky. So I'm just reducing the um, randomization to get it a bit softer. And that's essentially that. And then I, I also want to combine these two guys now. So, so all you have to do then is use the AI flake and connect that to the bump normal slot. And then you have these two things combined. You can obviously increase our bump a little bit just to get a bit more um, feedback on our bigger noise we created. It might already be a bit strong, so maybe just go to 0 0.001 just to have a very subtle effect of this, just to break up the surface a tiny bit. You can see it's very subtle, it's not too aggressive, but I think this is working quite nice. You can see these little flakes here and there. Uh, one thing which I like to do, we can try to adding a code because it is a bit dull and there could be a little bit of reflection. So under the code tab, we can try to bring that up. Um, this is now obviously coded, but if you increase the roughness, you just get a little bit more sheen on everything. Um, this is not maybe not needed, but I thought it added a little nice touch to this material. You don't see it as much in the ref, but it is a bit more glossy. But I think as it is right now, we are pretty close already. So now let's tackle this big chunk of material in the front which is a bit tricky. Like I tried a few versions and um, yeah, it's definitely not easy to create this kind of foam look. And you can see I had have some iterations here, which I tried previously and it looked like this first and then it got better and better and better. So this is where we left off. Our first idea was to work on the displacement to make sure we actually displacing the foam. So my initial thought was, um, make sure that you have a high high enough subdivision to actually see any detail. Um, so let's see the wireframe. Right now, this is the wireframe, so it's not very dense at all, but it did actually work quite well with my latest approach because I was using the auto bump feature, which actually saved my butt because I don't need to subdivide it as much. Um, so I was using the cell noise because it has this nice wall feature um, so in a cell noise, you have this pattern and there's this wall -E one, which I use, which looks like that. And then again, change your mode maybe to um, object or world space. If you have UVs, change this to UV. And that's, that will work if you move the object, the pattern will stick. And then obviously I was just changing the scale. And what I did, which is a good idea, is to use the user data because there's not a node with just a constant value. So I'm using the user data float to actually drive my scale. So I can just have this one value to drive all three at once. It's a nice little trick. 
and then you have your default values and you just put in maybe 50 and then you have this fine fine noise and just go maybe 20 maybe even 15 this already seems all right maybe go 10 as a pattern right so this would be a basic idea you can use randomize you probably do want to randomize these things and again uh, what we did previously as well we use different nodes um, and i want to do the same so i'm shift Ding this one and i'm hooking up this the same values to the scale so we have the same um, scale of the noise pattern but we're using a composite again to bring them both together probably using max or maybe at this time minimum we need to see i think probably minimum makes more sense and then we just hook this up quickly to our shader and then we do let's say minimum and then we can offset one uh, like that and then you can see um, they are essentially added on top of each other with different values right so we get a bit more detailed pattern all over the place now let's connect this up to our displacement so all we got to do for this is just use the red channel to uh, plug it directly into the displacement and obviously want the shader still to be connected so now we have this if we go to basic view we see what the displacement is doing and you can select the shape and then on the shape Arnold tab you have subdivision and you do have displacement so right now it's on 0.50 values 0.52 so I'm just disabling the height so we have no displacement and then we could slightly increase this maybe to 0.05 you can see we have something um, I want to make sure auto bump is on and then we get already this finer detail which is good this is what we want um, but we the, the pattern is weird it, it does not look like craters it's more like little overlays or something so i'm using the ai range to get more detail into this whirly pattern so i'm just hooking it up back up to the displacement and in the range enabling smooth stepping you can already see it changed the look and then i can slowly slide the values and you can now see the effect of the bump map or this pattern and this is essentially what I wanted to achieve is like this really strong cut out look. Um, but you need to fine tune it a little bit. Otherwise it will get funky quite fast. But I think this works already quite good. Um, and now if I go back to the shaded view, this is now what it's looking like already. So let's see. It's super glossy, but you, we are already getting closer to what we want to achieve. Um, if we go back to the sh um, shader of the foam, the values of 0.003, so it's super black, and the roughness at 0.89, 2289. So if you increase the roughness, you can see that everything gets smoother and you can really see those holes. So I was not really able to achieve the look like the, like the reference here on the left with this approach. So I thought, why not try to use the same idea I used in the, in the metal piece with that flake shader? Because essentially it looks like some cell noises flake together which create that optic. So let's disconnect the displacement for now and connect this to the normal camera again. Make sure your density or uh, yeah, your density is at one so you get more flakes or you can increase the depth so you get um, more flakes in the, in, in the like a separate layer, more layers are added. So you can see it's way more broken up. It's not that uniform, um, that uniform look to that flakes. So make sure to play around with that to get exactly what you want to see. And then again, it's about scale. So maybe go to 0 0.02, 0 0.002, which is a bit small. Let's go 0 0.08, 0 0.008 is what I mean, maybe 0.08 one it's better it's getting better maybe 15. so this is something which i think works it might be a little bit large but i think it is okay to test and then you have the flag normalize angle which gives you the the look of how much each flake is being angled towards the camera or away from the camera so in, in combination with the other one this is what i tried so now let's hook hook up the displacement map up again and this already got a little bit better. So now we have these two things together, but I think now the displacement is way too strong. So let's reduce that. Maybe go to 0.01. 
So this is now slowly getting more interesting. We can see we have the flake pattern, and we also see that we have this interesting effect of the displacement. So we have these two things on top of each other. Maybe try to get a bit more, uh, reduce the scale a bit more. Got a bit finer, maybe it's a bit too fine now. And then for our Wally, let's uh, maybe increase the displacement a little bit. 2 that's getting better and now i like to add more subdivisions because even without subdivisions it, it still looks a bit low so let's maybe increase our subdivs to four to get a bit more detail and especially in the wireframe this is more detailed now and the basic mode looks good as well you can see we have these shapes i think though that our pattern for our displacement is too large so um, let's maybe increase this to 15 so we get a finer pattern all over we go 18 and you can already see now it looks a bit better let's go back to shaded mode and now we are getting really close to what i think works quite well i just think overall it's maybe a bit too intense of the displacement so let's bring that back down again maybe to 12.012 that's a little bit better and then with the flakes we can play around again with the normalize um, you can see this is with almost without any break of that normalize but with it, you actually get this nice look to it. And then again, you can play around with the overall roughness. If, if it's not shiny enough, you just reduce the roughness and it gets way more plasticky or reflective. And this is already, I think, better than I had before. I think it is actually better than I had before. And this essentially is the idea of uh, what I try to explain is that you can combine different te techniques to get exactly the look that you want. So before we had the only the displacement, which looked okay, but a lot of people stopped there and think, okay, I tried everything. But then the new idea was, why don't you try the normalize of the flakes to bring that together? And you can see my progression. So this was, I think, just displacement. And I really just couldn't get it to work. And then I thought, oh, let's try the same idea we did on the metal. And then we actually got a pretty good looking result. So all we have to do to polish the render is obviously adding a few um, like depth of field and a nicer render settings. And then we're good to go. So I'm just heading over to my uh, to the render camera here. Make sure that um, on the Arnold tab, I'm enabling the depth of field to get this nice um, out of focus region and render settings obviously we just crank them up right now it's on 200 so it's very low we can go maybe up to eight for the aa samples and then one one um, to get a clean render so let's just see how that looks all right so now you can see the final render with depth of field and high render settings i think it looks quite good very close to the reference i think the reflection is matched pretty good Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was a bit shorter than usual. I just wanted to show you the techniques I used using the flakes and the combination with displacement map. I think the results are quite good, so please give me a thumbs up if you like what I do, and I will see you in the next video.